Hey guys, welcome back to another video with InfoSec Pat. In this video, what we're going to be doing is installing iSCSI targets. This is video 9 of the Windows Server 2019 little training tutorials. If you're ready, let's get into it. Thank you. Alright guys, welcome back. So, in this video, what we're going to be doing is installing iSCSI targets and we're going to set up iSCSI initiators and everything like that. What is the reason that you would do this? This is so you can have centralized storage, so you can connect over it through IP addresses. You can have this with VMware. You can connect to it with Hyper-V. It's just so you can have storage over the network. All right. So what we're going to be doing, this is, you know, this is a target um, on the on the virtual disks. This is the storage spaces, and this is gonna be our setup. We have obviously our domain controller, now is a DHCP server, as you've seen in the last video. And we have our files, file server, FS01. It's a file server, and we're gonna install the iSCSI target role on this server. And on the server I just built, SVR01, we're gonna have this as the initiator. All right, so we're gonna be connecting to the target. All right, so let's, um, Let's go get out of here. Oops, and um, and let's minimize this for a second. So let's just close this. So we have our, whoop, that's, no, not that. Uh, that's for WDS. I'm gonna be setting up a WDS server um, soon. So what we have here is our domain controller that we've been working with. Let's open up my server manager, local server. Win2K19DC01, same exact IP, nothing changed here. This is our file server that we just set up. And what I did do on this box, I did create a, an S drive and I expanded the, the volume. If you remember in our file server video, I think I allocated 30 gigs. And now I just extended that volume in VMware and then go into disk um, dis management if you guys are wanted to know how to do that if you're following along and you're stuck like so once you allocate like if you right click go to settings obviously you have to have the vm off and you go to disk and you hit right here expand and then you can just expand it to 60 gigs hit apply and once your computer your server boots back up go into disk management then you can have unallocated space you right click on it and then you extend volume and you next 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 and then it'll get um then it'll extend all right, so that's that. So this is going to be our target, right? This is where, you know, your, your file server is where all the initiators are going to be coming to to access the data. All right, so let's go to manage, add roles and features. And while we do that, so I just don't forget anything, let's just bring this over here. All right. Cool. So, so I just remember IP addresses and everything. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. Uh, role based. Next. Next. So right here, you're going to go under file. So if you see right here, iSCSI target server, that's what we're going to be installing on this box because this is going to be the target that we're going to be connecting to. Okay. And we're going to be connecting from SVR01. That's going to be the initiator. All right, so just hit next, next, install. So if we see here now, it's gonna, we're gonna have this, and that, now this is what we're doing right here. To install your iTargetSQL, to install iSCSI target server, start the start the, the add role and feature wizard, that's what we're doing right here. So we'll give that a minute to finish. Once that's finished, we'll go ahead and continue to configure this. It's a very, uh, there you go, it succeeded, bada bing. Okay, so we hit close here. Now we can create. See now it says, to create an iSCSI virtual disk, start the wizard. This is the wizard, the fancy pantsy wizard. So where, you know, what is the, the location of the disk? We're gonna pick S, okay. Yes drive and hit next. The name that I'm gonna make this is just gonna be V disk. D-I-S-K-1, that should be fine. You can put a description. So if you see here, the path, 
is the same, not the same, but let me see what I, uh, what I have over here. I have LUN1, but that's fine. You can name this whatever you like. It, it really doesn't matter, all right? So this is, this is gonna be the path though to that disk, okay? And I'll show you that in a minute. So we hit next. So we have free space, we have 60 gigs. So I'm gonna allocate 25 gigs, my num locks off, 25 gigs for this virtual disk, okay? And I'm gonna do it dynamically. So it's, it's gonna expand dynamically. What that means, it's not gonna allocate the 25 gigs right up front, okay? As it grows, it'll, it'll grow together. All right, so let's go ahead and hit next. We don't have any existing I, iSCSI targets at the moment. So this is why we're only getting the new um, option. All right, so let's hit next. The name, so this is gonna be the name that the initiator connects to. So let me see what I put as my name. All right, so I'm gonna put the name as iSCSI target hyphen one. That's just the name I put in my notes. And you can put a description and now this is the access servers. What servers are going to be accessing your iSCSI target? So if we go back to server one, SVR one, now we have to log back in. This is on the domain. I did all that already. So you don't have to see, we've been through adding computers to the domain, adding IP addresses and all that stuff. So this IP address is 207. So we're going to hit add. So we see here, we have a few ways to to um, identify the initiator, we have we're going to go back down here, enter the value, the value of the selected type. We have IQN, DNS name, IP address, MAC address. We're going to go ahead and go with the IP address 192.168.50.207. Okay, that's going to be the IP address. That's that's the only initiator. If you have multiple, like say for example, you have two. Um, Hyper-V host, you have one LUN on one, one LUN on the other, then you have to enable um, multi-path and all that stuff. So we're not gonna be doing that in this video. This is just gonna be a single initiator, just so you guys know how to configure it, get it up and running, all right? So let's go ahead and hit next. We're not gonna enable authentication, hit next and create. This should go out and create the LUN, I mean the, um, the target, close. See here we have, let's just make this a little wider. Whoop. Doom. Doom. Status. Okay. So now if we go to the S drive, iSCSI virtual disks, we have that virtual disk here called VDisk1 that we just created. All right. So now this is all good in the hood, right? So now let's go to, um, the server that we wouldn't be want to connect to over there, right? To the file server. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to tools right here. You have iSCSI initiator. You're going to get this little pop up. The service is not running. Obviously it wasn't running. So we're going to hit yes to start it. Okay. Once this starts, you're going to have this screen that pops up. Let's minimize that. So the target of the, 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 the file server, let's go check. Uh, that's why I have my notes over here. Yeah, my file server is 206. Let's just make sure. Let's just triple check. Local server 206. 192.168.50.206. And we're going to go ahead and put that in here. Let's turn on the numlock. Okay, quick connect. Connected. Log on successful. Done. Connect. Okay, so the multi-path. This is like if you have multiple servers with the same path. So we don't have that at this, so we're not gonna enable that. You can go to advanced, you can actually do a whole bunch of stuff in here, but we're not gonna be touching that today. All right, so to hit okay, that's fine. Okay, so it's connected. Okay, so now if we go to here, we don't see it yet, right? But let's go back here. Let's go to our initiator. Uh, where is it? Let's go back here. iSCSI. We can refresh this. Now we have it connected. Bada bing. All right. So what we're going to do now, there's a few more steps. 
We're gonna go on here. We don't see it though on this server, right? So let's go ahead and open up disk management. Okay, then we're gonna see this partition here. Here it is. See the 25 gigs. So we can bring this online. Once this is online, we can initialize the disk. We're gonna do disk one, hit okay. Okay, that's fine. And then we're gonna do a new simple volume, next, next. We can name it P for Papa Pat. I'm just kidding. Um, it, it can be whatever. Um, it can just be, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, data. It doesn't really matter at this, uh, this time. So now that's that. Now if we right click on here, go to properties, we can see virtual hard disk SCSI drive device. So now we can see the volumes, everything in here, the driver, the details, the events, everything. So now what we can do is minimize this. And now we can see that drive right here. Here it is, okay? So now that's pretty much sums up. Let me go back here. Let's just make sure everything is good. Okay, perfect. Yep, so everything is good in the hood. Let's go here. Let's make sure we refresh this. It's connected. And we go to properties. We can see it here. The IP address, where the initiate is coming from, 207, which is SVR01. It's connected. And that's about it. And the LUN is LUN0. So that's how you set up an IP an iSCSI target and the iSCSI initiator from the server that it wants to initiate to the server and to initiate the connection to the, the initiator uh, target. All right, so if you liked it, please like, subscribe, more videos to come. This is the iSCSI target configuration video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Thank you.